Hello everybody, my name is Christian Quick, and welcome back to another video. Now you may realize that we now, as you should, because the tutorial has gone that way, we have two blocks. We have block and animator block. And you see, the, the problem here is, now that we have multiple blocks, if I try and look up, like let's say I wanted a couple, you know, animated blocks, because I want to put them up through, that doesn't come up, and if I look up block, I mean there's a bunch of blocks, but mine, <clears throat> mine is not on this list. So... What we need to do is we need to add them to that little search bar, and we can do that by making by putting them in a group. Because what the search bar is, it is basically all of the item groups put into one group in which you can search for it. But if it is not in an item group, it will not be in here at all. Now, I'm only going to guess this, but I'm going to assume that the search bar is literally them going from one to last, first to last, uh, like that. In the search bar, Oop, if I go in the search bar, it's probably in that order. So if we make a new tab, because there can only be 10 per tab, it's going to make a new page. We don't have to code a new page, we just have to put in one and it'll actually automatically put in that page for us. All right, so the actual class file can go anywhere. I'm used to putting in my items folder, but I don't have an items folder yet. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll mention that right now, we can actually put it generally anywhere. So let's just make an outside Java class, make sure it's in your namespace, and uh, so it'll be in here. And let's just have one called uh, mod item group. Hit enter, and it does come in with everything else. <clears throat> We're not going to be implementing or extending anything. But then if I look up like the fabric item group, uh, this is how I figured this out, is I just kind of middle mouse button clicked on this. And it's going to give me instructions on what I should do in order to put this stuff together. So basically, we have this method here that's an uh, uh, that says uninitialize. So uninitialize is something that is basically going to go in here in our uninitialize. So that means what we're going to have to call a name. We're going to call this whatever we want, and whatever we call it, then we'll put it inside of our uninitialize. Now this was a little annoying to figure out because um, when I copied this, like here, so you see it looks pretty normal, but then if I paste it in here, um, it comes out like this, and that's very annoying. Uh, but then just kind of take on your uh, your things, so that is the, the, se uh, the semicolon meaning the end of command, so I stopped, so I stopped it there. We have at override, so I'm going to hit enter on here. We have the on initialize, so I'm going to just go right here. We're going to have this build, enter. So anytime I see a space, I'm just going to enter where that space is. And then right here, here, here. So now we notice that there is a bunch of things written in red. And what I want to do is I go to uh, item group and I hit import class. And then I can go over registry key, import class, registry keys, import class, identifier, import class, yeah. Uh, always use the, if you see a net, nine, uh, net Minecraft, use the net Minecraft mod ID, which for this, we would have to rename this to what our uh, ID is. So if I have hmh3.mod ID, that's what it's called for us. For here, we have this, which is the registry. We can import class, registries, import class, text, <laughs> text import class, item stack, import class, and then uh, I'll import class just because it wants us to, and then here it says, hey, here is our our items. We actually don't need this override, so I'm not really too sure why it's here, but it is. And then all you, all you can see, basically all the errors are gone except for this uh, uh, test item. So this test item is called that because it doesn't know what any of our items are called. Um, but let's fix the item group first. So basically, you have a registry key, item group, and then this is the big name, but this is the the big purple one. The That's usually a customizable, so we can call this whatever we want. So let's just call this, uh, for now, let's just call this, we can call this mod, um, and this will, will have all of our mod stuff in there. Um, registry keys dot item group. Okay, and then this is what the literal name is going to basically be called. No. That's what this is for. All right, so this is basically what you just want to call it. So let's just call it the mod. And we can see that this item group here is now red. And this is because the item group is saying, I want the name of the item group. 
So we're registering an item group, and then that item group needs a name, and this is that name. So if I just call this mod, because that is the only name, we can only register things that exist. So if the name doesn't exist, so now if I call this mods, it's going to be turn red again because it says, hey, there isn't anything called mod in our registry keys. So that's why those need, names need to be the same. So if you notice that the register gets underlined, it's underlining because you can't register something that doesn't exist, but there's that. Display name text translatable. This simply means what is basically the lang file? What do you want the text translatable to be? So it's going to turn basically the item group mod and it's going to turn it into whatever it is. And we can just call this whatever we want. So we can call this uh, mod stuff. And then here is where some of the other cool stuff is coming. We're gonna we're gonna compress this a little bit, just like that. Uh, and then we'll put build here as well. And also this. There's a reason why I'm going to do that one too. So a lot of times you'll see this arrow pointing at these curly brackets and it'll say replace with expression lambda. Now usually I would like to do this, but the reason I'm not going to do this, I know I did it right now, I can always control Z, is if you're only going to add one entry item, it's only going to just turn it into one thing so it can compress the code. Going back though, we don't want it to compress because we want multiple entries. So if I hit control D, D will copy the line that you are on. Um, so if I control D, uh, basically this one, it's going to copy the exact line and put it underneath it. So that's just kind of a fun thing to know. And then suddenly notice how that Lambda went away because I now have more than one entry and you can't have a Lambda be two things. So, or point to two things like that. So now we have this test item. Well, let's go into what our item is. So we have our mod uh, blocks dot, and then we have two things. We have our animated block, and then we also have our mod blocks dot block. And so the only thing that is missing is that our mod item group is not being referenced and our uninitialized. Now we could call this uninitialized, but let's call this register uh, item group. <laughs> well, I'm going to do it plural because uh, why not? Uh, I'm also going to let's control C and then let's come down here. So if you wanted to add another one, we can control D and then we're going to control, well, we'll control D here. I just controlled C, control V, so I copied the whole thing. Which actually, if you could uh, copy, if you control D, it will actually do the same thing. Um, but just another fun thing to know. So now we have mod, and then we have this. So let's say we wanted to make another one. Well, what we know about here is if it says the variable is already defined in the scope, that just simply means that you have something that is the same exact name that shouldn't be the exact name. So if I call this one blocks, uh, in all uppercase, blocks, and then I call this one items, despite me not having any items, uh, I'm just gonna blocks, and then this one will be items. We got this one, so remember, if it's red, it can't register something that doesn't exist. So here we'll have blocks, and then if I decided that this one was going to be blocks too, it's not gonna tell me anything is wrong even if like they were different. So if that one had animated block and this one only has block in it, it's just going to make two tabs called the same thing. It, the game has no problem making as many tabs as you want despite them being duplicate. It's just going to keep adding tabs for some reason. And well, I can kind of understand why it would let you do that. I mean, it's not game breaking or anything like that, but let's keep our blocks in here and let's take both these entries out. Um, well, instead of making them out, what I'll do is I'll make them space and I'll show you another thing. So let's say I know that I'm going to add something in here, but I don't necessarily want to break it or I don't want to, you know, have to like remember entries that add, even though it's written up here. Let's say there is a piece of code that is causing errors, but you don't want it to be affected. Just go into where your entries are and just double slash twice. And what it will do is it will take out that line of code. It'll make it gray. And gray simply means it's going to look over everything that would be in like on that entire line. So if I can also do this, so if uh, most people do this, if they want to write a note, so be like, you know, they come up here and they'd be like, this does uh, this. 
and then sometimes they'll go and shift and they'll be like, and then this does this. So this is how people normally insert messages and notes about their code. You can personally do this. I personally don't, because um, I generally know what everything does. Uh, but if you're testing things out, you can kind of use this step-by-step -step process when you're making something to really ensure you know in your head what is going on. You can ask yourself what's going on, what is everything doing, and that's a good way to do it. So instead of actually writing a note, I'm just putting code in it, and that's actually perfectly fine. So let's also call this mod uh, blocks. So then we have here, we're going to have mod item oops, items. And then we have your uh, your icon, item stack, items.diamond. So this is basically going to be what do you want to show inside of the thing? So if I um, if I have like the, the, the wool piece, there's one that's like, I think that's decorations. There's also like a brick. There's a redstone for redstone, the redstone dust. Um, this is basically what you want your icon to be, which is why it's called icon. So that you want it, when you click on the tab, that's the picture you're going through. So let's change this one. Let's make this the mod blocks. And then let's make this animated block because I think that one's cooler. And for our items, we'll keep this one diamond. Uh, I think that if it doesn't have any entries, it's not going to even show it anyways. Um, but whatever, <laughs> it's fine. But then, yep, we are still entries to add. It just needs context and entries, but we already did that. And then it does a build. So now we ha know how to both add multiple entries and stuff like that. So now we have the two of them. But now the last thing that we're going to need to do is actually register it. So we have a register item groups called mod item group. So let's go in here and let's do mod item group dot. Oh, and here it won't let me register the item group. It's just not coming up. When this happens, um, go back into your thing and make your thing static. Static makes things uh, public. Public, so public means can be seen in all files. Static is basically, to me, what static means is it makes your method names public. I don't know if that's exactly true, but watch this. If you Now that I've called this static, if I go back in here and then I say dot, it's going to say, hey, look, register item groups and it lets me do it. So, um... Somebody asked me in the past before, what is what does static do? And I said, I, I know how to use it, but I don't know what it actually does. That's what it does for me. If that's exactly what it's supposed to do, I guess I do know what static does. It just makes methods public. So you can use them. I also think that the order does matter. So if I move this to the bottom, I think this is going to uh, crash. But let's try it out and see what happens. Uh, they either fixed this or they didn't. It's not even a matter of a fix. <laughs> and then here we have attempted to. Oh. Uh, micro creative tab blocks. Uh, at different raw ID. Oh. Blocks at different raw ID. Okay, so basically, remember what I said earlier about this having the same name? Yeah, so I was wrong. This cannot have the same name. Uh, I think that's what it was in literally a, a version ago i i could have sworn I, I did it i did it before and it let me do it so now yeah don't they need to be they do need to be different so let's try it again and see if i get a different error because remember what i was trying to say i said if you tried and did item groups after it's still crash maybe maybe nope it let me go through interesting all right so i guess <laughs> perhaps the order does not matter anymore which is perfectly fine. So look at that. They fixed they fixed one thing and then broke another. It happens. So now if I go and hit E, it like I said, it would automatically make a new page. And if we go into a new page, that is the icon called mod blocks. We got mod blocks and then we have animated item and block. So now we have these things that we go on. This is ne normally a highly requested video to see um, because everyone like Without this tab, you're going to have to literally slash give every single thing you want. And you have to go through the list because let's say there's block, right? If I just start typing in block, it's going to get rid of mine and simply put in all of Minecraft stuff and just 
ignore mine completely. So then you have to put in whatever your namespace is, and then you can list what you want. Um, I mean, with that in mind, you know, that's that's literally everything. You have your, your groups. We, we did a little bit of troubleshooting together. Um, we didn't really do that much code reading. Usually... Usually we do a little bit of reading, but I mean, it's register, registry, registries, and then we're registering a thing, and then obviously anything gets registered does this. So I didn't do really that much code reading, but hopefully I was able to explain to you basically what they do. It really comes down to you're registering it, it needs a name, here's the registry, and then you have your display name, so here this is what you call whatever you want, the icon, and then your basically your entries. And my favorite thing about doing lists like this is let's say I control D and I have a huge list. Um, I like doing it like this by the line where all entries are basically on the same line because wherever I want, I can just control D. It won't break anything. And let's say I want, I had a bunch of item groups, right? And they were just lists and lists. It's very easy for me to go over here to the right side and there's these little down arrows and literally it just scoops it all up it's going to give me this little line of code here where it's going to say dot 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 meaning a long list here and then I can easily just go in and see all these entries. Now if I wanted to skip this one I just do the same thing. It gives me the well we'll say dot 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 and then I'd have the next one. So it is it is some um, it is really useful to to have and then if you want to open something up cuz maybe you, you just got the plus. So minus means to subtract some stuff, add plus means to add your stuff back. So Let's uh let's get rid of all this so that I don't have a bunch of blocks um just hanging chilling out in my in my thing. Oh, uh and one more thing. Now that we also have this, remember how I said about there being a list of all the things in order? Uh if you go into your search bar, if you just scroll all the way to the bottom, oops, if you just scroll all the way to the bottom, all your stuff will be coming after that last tab. And on top of that, I can also just search for animated block and it'll come up or I could search block and it'll generally be at the bottom because it loads all of Minecraft stuff first because of how the order of stuff works. But hey, it's all there. So now we can search it and we no longer have to do the slash give add s and then look through our blocks. So right now we only have two, which isn't that annoying, but uh, trust me, eventually the list does get annoying pretty fast. But yep, that's it. We have our we now have our item group. Oh. Um Oh. <laughs> I'm guessing this one's supposed to be items. So another thing is sometimes they uh every time you load this, I'm not really too sure how to make them or how to force load them into a particular order. So every time I do this, it actually just scrambles a bunch of them. But yeah. <clears throat> That is going to be it for this video. So if you have any questions, you can ask me down in the comments below. But that is going to wrap up this video for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. And without further ado, 